What's up guys, JS2 Cents here, and we're gonna do a small form factor build. Something I haven't, I think the last small form factor build I did was probably the Loki Ghost S1 case, and that was pretty frustrating. But this has a whole different goal in mind. We're using a whole different chassis, all off the shelf parts, no custom water cooling or anything like that, just to see if we can't build a badass gaming rig, because. Take overclocking and reliability to the next level with the new Z390 Dark motherboard from EVGA. The Z390 Dark is built for extreme overclocking utilizing features such as a 10 layer PCB, 17 phase power delivery, triple BIOS, and 150% more gold content meaning you get more of what you need to build the ultimate Intel based PC. To learn more about the Z390 Dark and its world class features, visit EVGA.com. Now I wanna to start today's video by giving a huge thank you to Micro Center who supplied some of the parts you see here today and sponsored parts of today's video. So if you guys wanna learn more about Micro Center and what you, where they are located near you, they're all over the United States. They've got some of the best combo deals and pricing that you could possibly get for computer components. So if you wanna find links to what we use for Micro Center in this build and learn more about their store, then please click the link in the description below. Huge partner for us. I cannot be more excited than having this partnership with them. So again, thank you, Micro Center. Now in terms of the parts, let's start with the chassis because when you're dealing with ITX builds, this is the single most important thing. We are using, and I know it's not a new chassis. Now see, not all builds need to be using the something brand new. It's gotta be something that just came out because relevance lasts longer than a couple of minutes, you know. This is the Evolve Shift. Now they have a new shift coming out and I thought this would be kind of a good opportunity to build something in this, even though they're getting ready to release a slightly newer version of this, where the glass panels on the side are being replaced by fabric panels, kind of like a speaker grill almost, to allow uh, better cooling for air-cooled systems. Now we are gonna be trying to do dual AIOs in this, which I know is possible. I've seen pictures, they even mentioned it in their manual, but that's gonna obviously make things a lot tighter in here. But I think if we can at least deal with AIOs in this, it'll give us better cooling than just choking it off of the glass side panels and not waiting for the air version. Besides, it's kind of like sticking close to my heart at water cooling, but I mean, there's always debates on whether or not AIOs are truly water cooling, although they're filled with liquid and they use a heat exchanger and a pump to move that fluid, but apparently they're not water cooling. But they also have a Shift X version, which is quite a bit taller. It's like almost 23 inches tall, whatever that translates to in centimeters and millimeters, but I speak American meters. Before you guys start throwing things at the computer going, but I thought Ryzen 2 was the best ever. 9900K, the reason why we did that is because we want high clocks. We're shooting for that five gigahertz plus, probably won't get it on a single 120 AIO, but we're shooting for five gigahertz. And because this is a primarily gaming centric build, we know that the 9900K and its superior clock speeds versus the new Ryzen 2 stuff is gonna give us benefit here in this particular scenario. Not to mention I have other plans for ITX on X570 once the 3950 comes out. So there will be ITX small form factor stuff for AMD with a whole separate purpose and goal. Can anyone say mobile workstation slash editing rig? That can also play games. For the motherboard, we are using the ROG Strix Z390i Gaming. And the reason why I went with this motherboard is I've used it in two other projects. This is actually what's inside our low-key Ghost S1 case. It's been extremely solid. It's got lots of functionality, room for two M.2, plenty of fan headers, RGB headers, the whole deal. It's also the same motherboard we swapped into our Corsair One, if you guys remember that video. So it's treated us well, and we are gonna continue using it because of that. Keeping our system cool, if we can fit all of this, I'm gonna be trying for dual AIOs. Yes, the H60 is probably not gonna get us to five gigahertz on our 9900K, but when you're dealing with small form factor, even a 120 millimeter AIO is gonna be better than a lot of low profile air coolers, especially in this chassis that doesn't have the mods and the extra panels on the side, they're gonna make it better for air cooling. So we are going with an AIO for the 9900K. Uh, power supply, EVGA sent over their uh, G650 or 650GM, which is a fully modular SFX power supply because this is not an ATX power supply. 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident RGB 3200 CL14. So it's fast memory, uh, it's got very tight timings and you can overclock this memory very easily to 3600 and beyond. But because we are dealing with a gaming PC, we wanted to go with 32 gigs, dual 16 gigabyte sticks, uh, but the cost to reward on that is if this were a, like an editing rig, then for sure we'd probably try and put 32 gigs in here, but we think 16 of fast memory is plenty for gaming. Storage. This is where you can quickly fill up your chassis when it comes to ITX builds. 
If you're dealing with SATA drives and SATA cables and extra ITX power or uh, SATA power cables, then it can easily start to get cluttered. That's why we chose to just go with the Intel SSD6. This is a two terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. No, it's not PCIe Gen 4. If it were, we'd be on an AMD build to utilize all of that speed. But it's a single M.2 that's gonna allow us to not have to have any extra cables for our storage. And given the fact that this is a gaming PC, we think that two terabytes of fast storage is more than enough. If you need more, use an external. And then for graphics, EVGA sent over one of the RTX 2080 Super Hybrid cards. This is based off of the um, reference PCB, but it is water-cooled, which will allow us to maintain better clocks. And even though it's gonna get a little bit on the warmer side being in this chassis, it's still gonna be better than choking off an air-cooled card even more. So that's our goal here, is both of these AIOs fitting in this chassis. And we're gonna try and make it pretty here with some cable mod RGBs that are Aura Sync compatible. The irony, because we're using an Asus motherboard, but they'll work with Mystic Light and all that sort of stuff too. So what do you guys say we start building it? I don't hear any answers, I'll wait. Yay! That's better. All right, so the first thing I tend to do when I'm building a small form factor stuff, we know we're gonna be able to put the CPU in the motherboard, and in this case, the M.2 also in the motherboard. We need the plan a little bit here. So we've got to tear down our chassis. The shift is pretty dope. Actually, I feel like this chassis is where now I know Corsair got their inspiration for the uh, their, their one, the Corsair one chassis. Very, very similar, and this came out first, but I digress, I don't have any data to support any claims there. Oh, that one was still screwed in. <laughs> there we go. Those are tight, man. It's like, it's like car panels. When you first take them off, how they're super like, it's like they're gonna break. Okay, so because we are using an F SFX power supply, um, it's gonna relocate it. So we use this guy, it mounts right there. It looks like it's gonna be like, it's a little door that flips up and down to cover wires and stuff to make it look better. Yay. Okay, so now that that is prepared, I'm, I want to use different fans in this. The only fan this comes with is a single 140 millimeter exhaust. But because we're gonna be putting a fan down here in the bottom and an AIO here, and another AIO here bringing air in, I'm debating also making this an intake and then just having all positive pressure in here. It's gonna be working for its intake, I can tell you that. Like what would be neat is, um, and I bet you these already exist, there was a website that made custom panels for the Evolve that had like extra milling in them and then it had a grill behind it. I bet you they make them for this. Which if they do and you're watching like you did last time, Email me. Let's get this 140 off of here. I feel like we need to get that 140 replaced with the higher static pressure, higher RPM fan. Phil and I kind of agree that in a build like this, it's okay for it to not be silent. It's not gonna be silent. It probably shouldn't be silent. You should be having functionality and cooling first and foremost. But Jay, if functionality was important, you wouldn't be going with a chassis like this to begin with. Well, we like it, so. So this is actually my first time personally unboxing one of these. My friend had a build uh, using 9900K, but his wife unboxed it. Hey, here's your decor. That looks so stupid. There you go. Uh, ow. Oh God. Oh, that was like three mistakes <laughs> in the past 20 seconds. This is like watching a sea otter try to like open a clam. Oh, there's two pieces of tape. This is the most anticlimactic unboxing I've ever seen. Oh my god, this is so sound. Easy. Now, normally this is when I would say you should always do a test boot of your stuff. Um, we're not doing that today. Just gonna trust that it all works. But you really should set it all up like on the box and plug in the power supply and CPU and all that stuff just to make sure it works. That we don't go through all that effort just to have it go, aw. Boom, 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 boom. It sounds very Star Wars-y. Join the Republic. We have donuts on Saturday. Now some people might look at this and go, but that's not a, the newest SSDs that they make. <laughs> like we're gonna scoff at two terabytes of M.2 NVMe NAND. That's right, Asus. You like to make me have to put on the little screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount my motherboard. So we'll put this. Jeez, so I think I have to go, ah, like that, and then like that. It's gonna look good, man. I, I, I'm finding myself, although I'm about to do another 
a new personal rig for me and bring Skunk Works back to the studio permanently, I'm finding myself just so intrigued with ITX builds. They always look so good. I love how there's like, there's no dead space. Although dead space is good for cooling. It's just, there's nothing here that like, just everywhere you look, it's like components and Computer. it's a brick of computer parts and it's more powerful than yours. Motherboard is installed. I'm gonna go ahead and do peel porn now because I'll forget later. I didn't really savor that, did I? Look at it, oh my goodness. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Boop. <laughs> it's so cute. I wanna squeeze it. It's like we have to try and do as much routing up front as we can. Cause like once these parts start going in there, man, there's not gonna be any opportunity to do it again. So this, this little guy. Yay! <laughs> Done. <laughs> I can't even imagine the design, like revisions that go into an ITX case, like how many times it's been changed and revised. Even that, just that little pass through right there to get my screwdriver in there, right? Someone on CAD somewhere, probably didn't have that until they went to do like their first fitment testing and they're like, oh, how are you gonna get a screwdriver in there? And they're like, well, we gotta put a hole there. You know what I mean? Now's the hard part, right? Can I fit both AIOs? That's, that's the thing that I'm most concerned about. Like I said, I've seen it done a bunch of times, so no really reason why I couldn't. Oh wait, yeah, I do, it's me. The reason why the fan has to go in the bottom is because the height of fan and radiator in the top won't leave us enough room for the fan and rad right here. So I don't wanna, mess up our thermal paste. So I'm gonna put some tape around that to hold it on. So the idea here, if I flip this around, so it's fan here, red like this. The Corsair won't be straight up and down, but whatever. That's just gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be just an OCD thing that has to be gotten over. <laughs> there we go. So we have some play, we can play with there. Got my fan cable there. What we're gonna do now before I actually mount the cooler because I still have to mount the RAM and all that sort of stuff and I don't want any of this in the way. Let's go ahead and do our graphics card. See how much room we have there. Now, like I said, this is the EVGA 2080 Super Hybrid. It's based off a reference PCB. So not the prettiest card in my opinion, but that's okay because in this chassis, it mounts backwards like that. So what you're gonna end up seeing is the back plates. The only thing that kind of sucks about this is we have one AIO with braided, uh, paracord braided tubes and one that's just rubber. This is almost like, dude, how much time have I spent planning this build? I'm starting to think all this planning time was actually well spent. Like, I feel prepared for this build. Jeez. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well. So, do what again? <laughs> it goes that way. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what is she doing? I don't even want to say anything right now because yeah, it's going too good. Uh, it's like... I'm concerned. I feel like that's the most JC sense thing though, is that we're worried when it's going right. <laughs> we're never worried when something's going wrong because that's par for the course. Now where it gets closest, and this is true for every card, is look at the gap for the power plugs right there in the fan. So I might even have to dismount that card to get it in there. In fact, a lot of people have said you have to run a slim fan to get it to fit, but I've already seen, like I can push the card out a little bit like that. And if I bend the cables real good, in fact, I should just mount those cables now. Because I'm having to use a pigtail, I'm really concerned. People that care about your PCI slots don't look. Yeah, look away, <laughs> <laughs> look away. Oh, it's like first time. Woo, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's how tight it's in there. That's not going nowhere. I mean, all right. Man, you want to talk about like a glove? God, I was really expecting like this to be like an all day type of build. But I feel like this is all so well planned out. Not just from like the research I did, but the chassis design. I hate ITX cases that are just big for the sake of being big. And like, look, we can fit full custom water cooling loops in it. And it's like, but why? What? Jay asking why to water cool? Oh my God. Dude, it doesn't even look like cluttered. Like there's a lot happening, but look, it's not like, I guess I'm ready for a cooler now, huh? All right, this is gonna be the most triggering part, honestly, is the fact that this is gonna be sideways. I guess I could, it's all twisted, but it reaches. 
it's on now. So ready to ram it. Trident Z for the pretties. And because it's gray, it has RGB. All the people that speak real English get really mad when we say Z. Z and aluminum. This is aluminum. Yeah. That one was satisfying. That one was very satisfying. All right, I know I am really nerding out over this build. There are no ITX cases on the market right now that are getting me as excited as this one. I'm so late to this party because it's, it's been out two years. All these comments are gonna be like, Jay, this case came out two years ago. I don't care. Better late than ever, I always say. Well, it took me just over an hour to build this, including making a video while doing it. It's the no-name ITX build featuring the Evo of Shift and a lot of other crap. The question is, is it going to post? I just want to get to BIOS. That's all I care about. We've got a motherboard light. Ooh, we have no RGB strip lighting, but that's okay. That's a start. Can I even see the QR code readout thing? Oh, this doesn't have one. What? What? Oh my God, why am I so excited about this? Phil, are you as excited as I am about this build? I mean, I thought you were gonna give this to me after you're done building it. I am actually. <laughs> Wait, what? This build from the moment it was considered was for you, dude. Brian and I have been planning this for weeks. Are you, are you, are you it was supposed to be for your birthday, but we didn't get the parts in time, which is why we went and got the other ones that we're waiting for. Are yes, you, I'm wait, dead serious. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Dude, my... And what the f <laughs> get, Why don't you go ahead and give us the peel porn? Because that's why I didn't peel these. I think we caught static. We just lost video. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry about the shaky camera. I've not done this in a while. I don't even, I don't even know what to say, dude. This is... Well, I have to get home because I have a six o'clock appointment. <laughs> now he has to edit his own <laughs> yeah, birthday my... present. <laughs> my uh, own birthday build. present video. So there you go, man. Hopefully you appreciate it. Dude, I can't even, I don't, this... <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. This is amazing. So it's been a little while now since we built this. Phil's had time to kind of revel in the fact that this is his new baby. He's got the operating system installed. So I wanted to take just a moment here to talk to you about some of our final thoughts regarding this particular chassis. I'm glad I made the decision I did to go with a hybrid card on this because with all the side panels on, the hybrid card in heaven will still reach about 75-76C with a 73 degree ambient temp. That's 28.8 um, degrees Celsius. In fact, when we took off the front panel, which remember we have the AIO in the front pulling air in. We also have this fan up here pulling air in, in from the bottom, so it's all positive pressure. You can feel all the heat and airflow coming off the top. Once we took the front panel off, we saw temps come down to about 64C. We saw low spikes of 62, and then it would kind of come back up. So it's one of those things where I'm kind of hoping that uh, the same company, I think it was Mod My Mods, forgive me if I'm wrong, but they, they made and sent us actually custom panels for our old Evolve that allowed us to be able to have better airflow for the intakes. And if they do that for these panels as well, I'd like, I'd certainly like to buy a set because they um, would dramatically help with airflow. The other thing we could probably try out is uh, Fantex is gonna send us the replacement side panels uh, that are made out of fabric, like the speaker grill fabric to put on the sides, which would also help us have just a lot of more natural uh, dissipation of the heat. The problem is if the radiator can't get the air through the front, which is the metal cover, putting open sides on here wouldn't make that much of a difference. I think if we took the glass off, nothing would really change in terms of temperatures because the supply of air is coming from the side that's more choked off. I think some cooling mods are probably bound to happen. In terms of the chassis ease of build, it was not difficult. 
everything fit in. Uh, no modification was needed to make dual AIOs fit. It, in fact, the, the tolerances were so tight, you could tell where they made adjustments to make sure that they would fit. I feel like there's some areas they could have added a quarter inch here or an eighth of an inch there and made a lot easier of a build process, specifically with where the graphics card power plugs go, since they have to point right at the power supply and you saw that, or right at the, uh, if you have an AIO, which is where the graphics card AIO is, how they were interfering with the fan. So I feel like if they added even just a quarter inch right there, or let's just say five millimeters, or I think quarter inch is about six millimeters, then you would get a lot more ease of fitment there, which would make a lot of newer and, and less experienced builders not feel like they're gonna break something by trying to make it fit. Um, CPU temps on here seem to be doing just fine, but that's because it's getting a cool supply of air right from the bottom, which is um, unrestricted, as you can see. It's just got this vent down here, uh, grill. So it gets a nice cool supply of air. It's the GPU that's getting a little bit on the warmer side. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys some final thoughts regarding the build and the fitment on this. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. You sacrifice some thermals for the sake of, the sake of aesthetics. And uh, if that's a trade-off you're willing to make, then that's what you do. Phil and I have talked about this already. The aesthetics of this are perfect for his setup. He's already gotten it kind of arranged and ready to go so he could take it home. And he knows that there are some thermal sacrifices that are made when you make design choices like this that are purely based on aesthetics. So you guys tell me what you think of this build aesthetically and uh, if you've built this before, what are your experiences? What parts are you using? And what are the temps and stuff like? We feel like there should have been a fan up top, quite honestly. We feel that's all that's missing is an assistant fan on the top to pull air out. Even though it clicks open like this, you could have still mounted it there and then the fan would close with it. So that's one of the, the, the things I would change. Fan up top, quarter inch, five millimeters here and there in different parts of the case would have made a huge difference. But you guys are the consumers, so you sound off in the comments below on how you feel about this chassis. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. And Phil is already installing World of Warships. This is actually what's inside the Goki. The Goki. <laughs> this is the other thing too is that we are going to be using. No, no, I gotta start all the parts rationale again. This is so cool. Voice cracking all. This is so cool. Some of the guy from Monsters Inc. Oh, yeah. oh no, we're gonna be in trouble. Uh, good luck out there. Shut up.